Hi, and thanks for watching. Our team studied hearing loss, and we titled our report Changes in Pure Tone Thresholds for the Audible Spectrum as Humans Age. Now, that title may look a little daunting, but it breaks down to understanding what sound is, how we hear, what auditory thresholds are, and what they have to do with hearing loss. When an object vibrates, it sends pressure waves traveling through the medium within which it's contained, and those waves cause sound. The two physical characteristics of sound most applicable to our hearing are frequency, which determines the pitch of a given tone, and amplitude, which determines how loud that tone is. The pressure waves that cause sound are transduced by our auditory system into electrical signals that our brain can process. The outer ear, or pinna, guides sound waves into our ear canal, where they travel to vibrate our tympanic membrane, or eardrum. From there, the bones of our inner ear, or ossicles, send the vibrations to the fluid within our cochlea, a shell-like structure in the inner ear. Within the cochlea, sensory neural hair cells bend with those vibrations and send impulses to our auditory centers via the vestibulocochlear nerve. The audible spectrum represents the frequencies humans can detect. For any given frequency, an individual requires a certain amplitude to be able to detect that tone. That minimum audible volume is an auditory threshold. Pure tone thresholds are the gold standard for testing hearing, and they represent the volume necessary for an individual to detect a specific pure tone. The higher the auditory threshold, the worse an individual's hearing for that frequency. Audiograms are a standardized way to display auditory thresholds across a range of frequencies. It's like an upside down graph. The x-axis on top shows frequencies increasing from left to right, and the y-axis on the left shows amplitude increasing from top to bottom. The colors represent levels of hearing loss. So once again, higher pure tone thresholds mean more hearing loss. There are two main types of hearing loss, conductive and sensory neural. Both can be caused by trauma, disease, or both. Trauma might be an extremely loud noise, or lots of loud noise over a long time, or exposure to autotoxic chemicals. Disease risk factors include various types of neural impairment and chronic hypertension. Hearing loss affects about 21% of adult males and about 18% of adult females, and hearing loss for high-frequency sounds tends to come earlier in life than that for low-frequency sounds. There are specific considerations related to hearing loss in the aging population. When it's caused by factors specifically related to aging, hearing loss is known as presbycusis. Hearing loss affects about half of people over the age of 65. Hearing loss can have serious repercussions. Studies have, studies have found hearing loss in individuals over the age of 65 to be linked to the development of dementia, including Alzheimer's. Furthermore, untreated hearing loss can lead to severe social isolation and clinical depression. While it is well documented that hearing thresholds increase with age, it continues to be important to research and document the details and prevalence of age-related hearing loss as the aging populations of industrialized countries such as our own yield more and more people who struggle with it. We hypothesize that an individual's thresholds for detecting pure tone sound across the audible spectrum increase with age. In other words, older people have more hearing loss. Moving on to method, here is an overview on what we will be covering. For participants, we have a sample size of 45 subjects, age ranges from 12 to 95, and we use convenient sampling method by contacting family, friends, and classmates. The number of participants in each age group is separated by 10 to 19, which has three subjects, 20 to 39, which has 21 subjects, 40 to 59, which has 11 subjects, and 60 to 99, which has eight subjects. Two participants were screened out as the audiogram was eligible. The design has two parts. The first part is taking the free online hearing test provided by MD Hearing Aid. The hearing test itself consists of 12 pure tone frequencies. Six tones are tested in the left ear and six at the right, playing at various decibels and producing an individualized audiogram at the end. The second part is completing the Google survey where the participants would upload their audiogram from the previous part and answering seven questions. In our experiment, the independent variable was participant age and the dependent variable was participant hearing threshold measured in decibels. For the procedure, participants had to complete two separate tasks, take an online hearing test and complete a Google survey. To take the online hearing test, participants needed an internet connection, a mobile device or computer, headphones, and a quiet environment. Using the instructions sent to them in the recruitment email, Participants went to www.mdhearingaid.com 
opened the online hearing test and followed the in-test instructional prompts. The test generated six tones or frequencies in the right ear first and then six tones in the left ear. For each individual frequency played in the participant's ear, they had to respond by adjusting the decibel level to the softest sound they could barely hear and click save and continue to move to the next tone. After participants completed the test, an audiogram image was generated and they saved that file to their device. The next task, completing the Google survey, required the participants to log into a Google form and answer seven questions that included an area where they could upload their audiogram image. The survey included questions such as age, gender, occupational noise levels, and recent exposure to loud noise. Responses from the survey were recorded in a Google form and each audiogram image was later translated into values on a separate Google Sheet for data analysis. We analyzed the data by calculating the mean decibel reading from each participant's right and left ear. The right and left ear mean results were then averaged together within four age groups, 0 to 19 years, 20 to 39 years, 40 to 59 years, and 60 to 99 years old. The pure tone thresholds were then correlated with the six frequencies in the audible spectrum. The results. Here is a graph that presents average pure tone thresholds across four age groups, which are 10 to 19 years old, 20 to 39 years old, 40 to 59 years old, and 60 to 99 years old. Error bars in this graph represent plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean. The graph displays pure tone thresholds on the y-axis and age on the x-axis. The 10 to 19 year, year age group had an average pure tone threshold of negative 0.56 decibels plus or minus 3.96. The 20 to 39 years old group had an average pure tone threshold of 0 0.10 decibels plus or minus 8.23. The 40 to 59 years old group had an average per tone threshold of 18.4 decibels plus or minus 18.5. The 16 to 99 years old group had an average per tone threshold of 24.2 decibels plus or minus 16.6. Here we have the second graph of our data. The second graph of our data presents the average pure tone thresholds across a frequency range within the four age groups. The four age groups are the same from the previous slide. In this graph, it displays pure tone threshold on the y-axis measured in decibels and frequency on the x-axis measured in hertz. There are a total of six frequencies displayed at 250, 500, 1000, 2000, 4000, and 8000 measured in hertz. I'm not going to explain every measurement at each frequency, but I'm going to provide you with the measurements at the 8000 hertz, which is the last data point of each line graph. In the 10 to 19 year, years group, the average pure tone threshold is negative 1.67 plus or minus 2.58 decibels. In the 20 to 39 year, years group, the average pure tone threshold is negative 1.07 plus or minus 9.01 decibels. In the 40 to 59 years group, the average pure tone threshold is 21.6 plus or minus 21.6 decibels. In the 16 to 99 years group, the average pure tone threshold is 36.9 plus or minus 23.8 decibels. I'm going to talk about the discussion on the research. Based on studies indicating that hearing threshold increase with age, we hypothesize that an individual's threshold for detecting pure tone sound across the audible spectrum increase with age. That results show that when you compare participants whose age is between 60 to 99 years of age to the younger who are between 20 to 39 and 40 to 59, there is not a statistical significant relationship that can prove that pure tone sound increase with aging, but our hypothesis is partially supported 
between the lowest and the highest of the age ranges that are 0 to 19 and 60 to 99 years old. Our findings correlate with other similar studies. Those studies use similar odometry techniques to those employed in the research and found similar auditory threshold trends that demonstrate a clear link between hearing loss and aging. There were several limitations in our study. That includes a small sample size, the lack of control criteria for device types, self-reporting of data, and self-performed hearing tests with different standards of quiet and comfort. Further studies should be conducted with more strictly regulated data standards to ensure more accurate results using standards, standardized audio devices in a controlled listening environment. Doing so, our findings could help to improve our understanding of the relationship between aging and hearing threshold. If you have any questions or comments about our presentation, please feel free to email us at geofel112 at gmail.com.